I'm gonna go through every single detail I know about smoking a tobacco pipe. <sighs> Side note, YouTube hates the tobacco content and they hate when I talk about becoming a better man for the most part. So if you could help me by sharing this video, thumbsing it up, commenting, and subscribing to the channel if you're not subscribed already, that would be hugely helpful. All right. So I figured I'd begin with just an overview of the different types of pipes. Not so much the style of the pipe, but different pipe materials. The most popular kind of pipe that you'll find is a, whoops, is a briar pipe. It's literally made from briar wood. There's different types of wood that are used, all hardwood, but briar is the most popular. You also have corn cob pipes. Oh wait, I had more to say about Briar. Hold on, just take it easy, okay? This is gonna be a long video. I've got a lot of information to share here. Briar is the most popular type of pipe made today, says my notes. Pipe makers primarily use Briar for two reasons. It's extremely resilient to fire, which seems to be a good thing with the pipe, and its porpoise nature makes for a dry, cool smoke. You can see here, I use this pipe in a video. I make videos for a living. And I don't know if you can see there, but it burned the side of it because I had it basically on top of a candle by mistake and didn't realize it. And the thing would not burn. It sat over an open flame for a good amount of time and barely burned through And this pipe is still a gold standard, the one I use the most. They usually cost a little bit more. A briar pipe, I don't know, probably starts around 30 to 40 bucks on kind of the cheap end. And then they can go up from there to pretty much as much as you want to spend. The next very common pipe, especially if you're just getting started is the corn cob pipe. This is a classic, this is old school. And these things don't get the, I think, amount of attention and uh, the amount of praise that they actually deserve. Corn cobs are cheap, which is why most people start with them, but usually they're like, oh, I need a more expensive pipe. But in reality, a corn cob will last forever. They come in a ton of different styles, they're cool looking, and like I said, they are old school pipe. They've been around for a long time. They also require zero break-in period, which means you can put tobacco all the way into this bowl, all the way to the top and start smoking it right away. Whereas a briar pipe, technically, if you do it by the book, you're supposed to sort of break in the pipe. And the break-in process that I've been told is that you fill the bowl halfway and you smoke it very lightly. You don't wanna get the bowl too hot. You just wanna take it easy for about five smokes. Then after that's broken, you have a good char on the inside of the bowl from the tobacco that kind of protects it and makes the flavor better. You know, there's a little bit of a process. Corn cob though, just throw the tobacco in there and start smoking. You don't have to worry about a thing. Corn cobs. I've also been told by somebody who, I'm sure is, I'm sure is somebody credible though, most likely. Why, why am I hitting myself in the head? Um, I've heard that the tobacco that you put in these, like that the corn cob pipe itself doesn't hold on to the flavors of the tobacco you put in it as much as a briar. So some people will have a briar pipe specific to a flavor of tobacco that they like and they'll only use that tobacco on that pipe so that that pipe has that flavor. Corn cobs, I've heard, you can just throw whatever you want in there and it's not gonna taint the color. Color of the wind. That was from Pocahontas. Real men watch Pocahontas. You can't even say Disney anymore because it's, so, it's such a political thing. Yeah. What else? Corn cobs uh, make great travel pipes because they're cheap. And if you lose one, you forget one, you break it, it doesn't really matter. And they're made right here in the good old United States of America. Which happens to be my home country and the one I like the most. There's a couple other pipe materials. One's called Brylon, Brylon. I don't even know how to pronounce it. It's B-R-Y-L-O-N. My dad has a couple of these pipes. They feel like plastic. I guess it was developed. I guess, I guess, who cares? You know, I just know these things. It's common knowledge. When you see me looking down, I'm not reading notes. I'm just tired of looking at you. Uh, it was developed in the 1960s as a cheaper alternative to Briar. Finally, have you ever seen those old pipes? They're white and they look like they're made out of like some sort of stone and they're usually carved into some kind of face. That stuff is called, I'm not looking at notes, Mirkum, Merker, Mer, Merka. It's down here on the screen. I don't, I don't want to come off as like arrogant just because I know everything. It's a soft white mineral primarily harvested in Turkey. It's a lot like soap in its natural state, but the pliability of it makes it easier to make intricate designs. Now, beside the type of wood or product that the pipe is made out of, um, there's a ton of different styles of pipes, different shapes as you can see here. I've got a few of them. There's not like a recommended style of pipe other than going into a pipe shop or trying some different pipes and holding them in your hand and 
figuring out which one feels the best in your hand. Stick it up into your face. How's that feel? The biggest difference I've seen, I've found in like really cheap pipes and better pipes is just the draw. The amount of air you get through, down through the bowl, into the stem, and then into your mouth. Some cheaper pipes tend to clog more or the draw is just bad. You really have to suck on it like a tiny straw. You want a good draw on the pipe. You want to be able to get lots of air through there without really any effort. But really it just comes down to your preference. What pipe do you think looks cool and which one feels good in your hand? I mean, that's really it. A lot of people, when they first get into pipe smoking, they think of those big, long Gandalf pipes that actually, that also have another name. I do know it. I just, I want to keep some, uh, I want to keep you on your toes. Anyways, I have one of those. I think they're a pain to use. They're cool looking, but in actually smoking every day, this is the one I use the most. This was about a $45 pipe. These ones are cool, but to me, it's not as comfortable because it kind of hangs down low. I mean, that's the advantage of this pipe, I guess, if you just want to hold it in your mouth like this and be like, yeah, I have a pipe in my mouth. You can do that because it kind of rests on your chin right there. But when I go to grab it, I want to grab it right here, not down here. It feels weird in my hand, so I don't like this one as much. Do you hear the difference? Listen, this pipe, the draw is effortless. This pipe, I guess you can't hear the difference really, but this one, I, it takes a lot more effort to get air through here with the pipe being empty. So you can grab some pipes and just try drawing through them and you can feel the resistance difference. This one has more resistance. And part of the reason also is because of the deep bend in the stem. So a straighter stem allows tech usually easier draw. <laughs> what else? Oh, one other cool thing that some pipes do that I actually like a lot. The only pipe that I have currently that does this is this corn cob. Watch this falls over, falls over, falls over. This one stays up. It seems like a small thing, but it's kind of nice because when you go to smoke a pipe, sometimes you need to get up. Sometimes you need to set your pipe down and go do something else. And it's always kind of a pain when you have a bowl full of tobacco. Like you can't, the thing can't fall over because all your tobacco is going to fall out. So you're always trying to figure out a way, like you got to set it up next to something else. You got to find something to like, you know, what a pain, right? Uh, but this one, you just set it down, walk away and you're good to go. And this is the corn cob. This was the $7 pipe I got on Amazon. Oh, more? <laughs> We've got a lot more. How you doing? You need a break? You need to go get a pipe? We're going to get into uh, lighting these things pretty soon, but we're just covering all the bases here and I need a drink. You ever find that when you have like a cup of coffee or something, you set it down hard and then look somebody square in the eyes? You should try it. Anyway, side note, if you are interested, again, in becoming a better man, a better version of yourself uh, for your wife, for your kids, for your community, let me know. Send me an email or join a Discord. Link is in the description. Next, let's talk over some of the tools that you need to smoke a tobacco pipe. There's not a lot, but there's a few things. First, a tobacco pipe. If you didn't know that, pfft, boy, I don't even know how you got your phone to work. You need a lighter. I might talk a little bit about lighters because I prefer jet flame lighters, which tobacco pipe enthusiasts hate. They think I'm an idiot for using these, but I think it's brilliant. I have a couple of videos specifically about different lighters for tobacco pipes and what they do, what the pros and cons of them. I'll put a link to that video in the description below. And if I think about it, when I'm editing this video, I'll put one of those little bubbles that pop up here on either side that will link to that video, but you should finish this video first. Anyways, I really like these kind of pipes. This isn't a pipe, this is a lighter. I really like these kind of lighters because they work in any weather. The biggest problem with matches or soft flame lighters is that if you're outside, which you typically are when you're smoking a tobacco pipe, and there's any kind of breeze, these are a pain because the breeze blows them out. Same with matches. Whereas a torch lighter, you can use that thing in a tornado and it'll light your tobacco pipe. So we have a tobacco pipe, we have a lighter. You also need tobacco, again, Seems a little obvious. I don't know, you might be a moron. The final tool, well, there's two more. A tamper like this is handy, but you don't have to have one. These are like, I don't know, two bucks at most tobacco stores. It's a three piece tool. It opens up like this because it's real fancy. And you have, this is the tamper. This is the little spiky thing that you use after you're done smoking and you have just a wad of kind of condensed tobacco in the, in the bottom of your bowl. 
you can use that to kind of scrape it out, loosen it up. And then you use a little shovel guy to get the tobacco out and also to clean the inside of your tobacco pipe. Because after you smoke these things, I don't know, four or five, six times, they begin building a little keg, a keg, uh, some of the tobacco residue, whatever is in the tobacco, it starts to build this wall, this layer of gunk. After a while, it gets pretty thick and you just want to clean that off. So these are cheap. You don't have to have one because you can use anything as a tamper. I have a really fancy tamper that I got in uh, Williamsburg, Virginia. The tamper, I'll get into this when we go over how to actually, you know, smoke the pipe. But it just, it goes on the, it, it, it just, it smashes down your tobacco, basically. So, what else could you use for that? Your finger. I mean, it does get a little hot, but you can just, I, I, do, I use my finger all the time, even after I light it. Just, psh, psh, psh. Come on. I mean, what? I could use this. Nope. Finally, just for maintenance, you can get yourself some pipe cleaners. One of the kind of gross side effects of smoking a pipe is that your saliva gets stuck in the stem. I don't do this very often, but once in a while. I'll use these. So I, I'm editing this video and it, it's dark in here. That's life. And you can see the back of me here. Uh, it's, it's getting late in the day. I've got some other work I've got to do. So I'm going to break this video into two parts because the next part's equally as long and you'll have to come back to this channel. I do want to end this video with one more sales pitch. So please, this is important. Uh, we are starting, if you don't know, I have a lot of content on, I'm trying to talk fast so I don't lose you. Why am I yelling? Anyways, we have, I have other content on this channel that is devoted to making myself better and trying to be a man who stands up instead of sitting in a room full of people complaining about how the world is. Myself and a group of other guys are meeting together on this platform called Discord and we also have a website that I'm currently building. Uh, where we are trying to figure out how we can lead uh, our country. That starts with us, leading our families, leading our communities, and then hopefully making a difference in our respective countries. Anyways, if, you, if that resonates with you, if you watch some of the other videos I have on this channel in regards to that and you'd like to be involved, um, I'll have a link to my email in the description below and also the website that, again, is in the works. This whole thing is like brand new. We're just putting it together, so it's rough, but... Uh, just wanted to throw that out there. Also, YouTube doesn't like this kind of content. They don't like tobacco pipes and stuff. So if you would like to help this channel grow, we're trying to reach more and more people. Uh, like it, please subscribe. If you're not subscribed, good Lord, you should subscribe. It's great stuff on here. It's great. And uh, what else can you do? Share the video, that kind of thing. And support on Patreon if you'd like. I have a Patreon link in the description below. And if you go uh, become a Betterman's that's what we're calling our group of guys. Uh, you can support our endeavor that way as well. Okay, I gotta go. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Eh, somewhat. I'm kidding. I appreciate the heck out of you. I don't know who you are, but I'm sure you're great.